Well, welcome back. This is part two of the radar transmitter and receiver lecture, lecture 10, the last lecture of the Introduction to Radar Systems course. Okay. Now let's look at the waveform generator and receiver. Okay. Now what are we doing there? The first thing we're doing is, and we're just going to look at functionally, which we're going to generate a waveform and we've talked about different waveforms where we turn on and we have a sine wave that's turned on for a while and then it's turned off and the length of that is our pulse width. We call that a pulsed CW signal, you know, and the, the, the frequency of the, of the wave inside that pulse is our carrier, the frequency of the radar, you know. So we take that and we generate that frequency um, down at, at frequencies that aren't microwave, where it's easy to make a very uh, non-lossy, just exact, with just the right characteristics of stability. We generate that at low frequency, and then we amplify it, and then we upconvert it to the frequency that's of interest to us. And I'm going to talk in a minute what I mean by upconvert. When you say upconvert, I want you to think we shift the frequency, but I'm going to show you how we do that in a minute. And then we filter it, because when we upconvert, we're mixing together a, the carrier signal with this small, with this waveform that we generate, and it generates the, um, the pulse at the frequency that we're interested in, the microwave region. And so what we do is we filter afterwards to get rid of noise on either side of the frequencies that we want to transmit. So we're going to do a amplifying and filtering when we do either up conversion or you'll see in a second down conversion. Now this is what we do in the transmit chain. On the receive chain, when the very weak signal comes back, the first thing we do is we want to filter out noise that's out of the band of the frequency that we're the carrier frequency. And then we down convert that signal where it's easier to deal with. And we amplify it, then put that signal into the analog to digital converter, the A to D, and where we get out our our detected output of our the size of our echoes, sets of ones and zeros. Uh, each different sample is a bunch of ones and zeros, a number, a digital number that gives, tells us how big the echo is at each sample. Okay? So that's the function of what we're doing. Now, what do we, what do we really mean of what we're doing when we're doing up conversion, down conversion, and why? Okay? In the waveform generator, in the receiver, that, that section, the transmit, we have, we start off with a uh, 100 megahertz, a tenth of a gigahertz waveform, say, that's easy to generate, nice and stable, it's got all the right characteristics, and it's very low cost to do. Okay? And then when we upconvert, what we do is we have an oscillator that's, at a, 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 that's very, very precise, and in this case 1.4 gigahertz. And when we upconvert, we're essentially adding the two frequencies and what comes out is the sum of the two frequencies. And this device is actually uh, what is known to, if you happen to be an electrical engineer, it's known as a mixer. And when you do, when you add two signals together, you get both uh, the sum and the difference of the two signals. And in this case, the, uh, the up conversion, we're looking at the sum of the two signals. Okay. And so what we get is the sum of the, the frequency is the sum or 1.5 gigahertz, which is an approximately the L-band region. And the reason we do this is waveform generator is less expensive at lower frequencies. Now when we receive the signal back at 1.5 gigahertz, we want to down convert it back to a, to a low frequency. And we want to do that because when we want to go digital to do the processing, uh, it's easier to get high dynamic range for A to D converters at lower frequency. And when we down convert, we put into a mixer, uh, again, the same exact local oscillator signal of 1.4 gigahertz, 
but we take the difference output from the mixer. We use the mixer slightly different. And there it subtracts the two signals, the 1.5, the frequency 1.5 to 1.4, and we're left with a signal whose frequency, uh, center frequency is 0.1 gigahertz, and that would go into the A to D converter. Okay? So that's what the up conversion and down conversion are done for. The uh, up conversion is because it's a bit less expensive to make the, uh, the waveform generator, and the dynamic range issue with the A to D says, oh boy, you really want to do it at as low a frequency as possible. So that's why we do it. Let's look at this all together in a, in a full-blown system. I've sort of started, built up this transmitter and receiver piecemeal. So we start off with, with our system, with the numbers we talked about in the previous view graph. We started off with a tenth of a gigahertz in the waveform, frequency in the waveform generator. We amplify it, filter it, then we up-convert it to a gigahertz and a half, filter it again, then go into the high power amplifier where we make it gigantic, and then out through the switch, which is turned so that nothing gets in the receiver and out the amplifier. And then after the transmitted the pulse is transmitted, we turn the, the switch, the duplexer, in the other direction, transmit is cut out, and we listen carefully, and then we filter the signal, amplify it, down convert it and then A to D the signal. And in many cases there'll be multiple stages. I've just shown you one stage of up conversion and down conversion and there can be multiple stages in general in many, in many radars and receivers in the microwave region that are, that are used. For, uh, and we can have multiple stages of filtering and uh, amplification as well for the reasons I've mentioned. Now let's look at, amp at the uh, whole issue of uh, transmitter and receiver architectures. I've talked a little bit about each of them in the past. I've shown you a picture of a tube system and then mentioned about passive arrays and active arrays. And now let's look at those architectures and say why would we use one or the other. Okay, first let's look at um, dish radar systems. They are really the simpler ones in terms of a block diagram structure and how the block diagram of them, of how, how it looks. They have the simple, obvious, the waveform generation, a big transmitter like that big room I showed you at Millstone, uh, or that S-band transmitter with the traveling wave tubes, a duplexer, a switch, and then out a big dish. And then back a receiver and an A to D converter back to the receiver and signal processor. Dish radars, a lot of the time, will use, most of the time, a lot of the time, not, but not all, will use um, these, these transmitters. With dish, uh, we'll use single uh, tube transmitters. Okay? And this is a block diagram of what it looks like. What are the attributes? Well, they're the lowest cost. But when you have a dish radar, you've got to remember you've got the inertia of that dish, and it's going to be pointing towards one target. And usually dish radars are single target systems. Okay? And, um, and you can also change frequency pretty readily uh, with dish radars. You've got 10% bandwidth ish you can have with a tr that kind of a transmitter. It's pretty easy to get bandwidth uh, inexpensively with the dish radars. The cons are they've got a dedicated function. They're going to do one target at a time, pretty much. Uh, at, at least one angle they'll be pointing at. There may be within the range swath a number of targets. But the, and they're going to have a slow scan rate. If you've got a, a target um, in front of you, uh, at right on bore site, straight out, and then another target that's 30 degrees away. Some of those, the, those big antennas have a huge amount of inertia. It takes giant torque motors to move them, and there's a finite time to move all that mass, that, that, uh, the moment of inertia, over in a graceful manner that doesn't grind the gears and, uh, and, and, and literally destroy them. You can't have infinite accelerations with these torque motors, or 
infinite torques, you know. So you can't just go boom, boom. So, uh, and you need, you're going to need that custom transmitter, and there are pretty high losses. The losses are the highest in this. Now, as time progressed, and these were radars that, uh, they, we still build plenty of dish radars, but it was a technology that was developed first. Then, we de as technology progressed and people uh, developed phase shifters, I've already talked about them, Phase shifters allow you to change when you have a, a set of, and say, dipoles all arranged in a big patchwork. And we'll let, let's just think of a linear dipole for the second here. Uh, here we've just got four elements and four phase shifters. But the point being um, that we could change the phase in those phase shifters and ferrite phase shifters in, in microseconds. And in changing that phase, that changes where the beam is pointing. So we could track a target over 45 degrees in one direction and then microseconds later send a burst of energy over 30 degrees in another direction. I mean, if we have a phased array that's uh, like that pave pause radar that has both uh, elements in, in both vertical and horizontal dimension over a very wide angle, say plus or minus 45 degrees, we could send beams out in every which direction. Uh, every tens of microseconds for being the time to change the antenna's pointing. Of course, it's going to take time for the round, the pulse repetition rate. So, um, and so it takes a certain amount of time to do the process of transmitting a, the pulse and listening for the echoes. But the actual time of moving the beam can get very, 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 very small. And the first thing people did was they just implemented phase shifters. Okay. They had the tube antennas, but, and they used what's known as a corporate feed, um, a, a, a set of waveguides that would branch out to different places and feed and, uh, like the trunk of a tree. They, they might have one transmitter uh, taking care of one quadrant of a phased array, another transmitter taking care of another quadrant, and then uh, the waveguide would branch out with a 3 to 1 feed, and then another 4 to 1 feed, another 4 to 1 feed, like the branches of a tree, so that microwave energy would finally get to the phase shifters, and then the phases would be changed and the energy radiated, and to generate the, the beams on transmit or receive. Okay. Now, what are the, th what are the uh, attributes of this system? Okay. Um, you've got your beam agility. So you can move your beam around quite fast, and you can effectively manage your radar resources, an attribute of having the good beam agility, the superb beam agility. These are higher cost. You've got that whole microwave feed structure here still, and we've got the high cost of the transmitter and a, a complex feed system. When you only have the feed going out to one dish, one, pa one parabola to one feed, it's a lot less costly than a than the microwave that has to work its way out to all the different um, uh, elements in your phased array. So it requires a custom trans, it's a much higher cost, but it's not as high as the next one. It, but you, it, in other words, you pay for what you get. Uh, it's got high losses uh, still because it has the transmitter and receiver uh, uh, the, the tube type, which innately have higher losses than the solid state systems, and it requires custom transmitter and high power phase shifters. Okay, remember we're doing this phase shifting at quite high power. Okay, now when we go to an active array, that means we have individual transmit receive modules behind each radiating element. I'm going to show you in the next view graph how, what that is. But let's first look, look at the attributes. We're going to have the beam agility. Great. We're going to have effective ra ra radar resource management, as before. We're going to have lower loss, because we're not going to have the losses associated with the corporate feed. The whole transmitter and receiver will be right up there in the antenna. But it's a much more complex and costly system, the most complex and costly. But it does the most. Um, you're going to have a very complex cooling system because instead of having uh, a water or ethylene glycol, a common uh, uh, cooling fluid, 
uh, pumping through that huge uh, klystron, uh, which is a rather centralized cooling system, we're going to have a cooling system that's going to be distributed all over the face of a, fa a big phased array radar. So the cooling system is going to be much more complex. And there's a much higher cost for all these deep ind individual elements. Okay, And um, we've shown pictures before of a lot of the different radars. This is like the Millstone radar. This is like the Aegis radar. And this is like the Pave Pause radar. You know, that's a nice way of moving down the line. Now let's look a little bit about what the active uh, phased array elements really are, so you can see a little bit better. Th those little sections in the, the, I'm blowing them up so you can look at it. So at, with each um, uh, transmit receive mod with module, the core, I'll say, the core of, of the phased array radar is each transmit receive module. Okay. Now, and notice what we do is we have a waveform generator which will send at low power signals out to the transmit receive module, which has a low power section and a high power amplifier which generates high power, but not at all as high power as that big tube. Remember, the, these solid state modules generate tens or hundreds of watts of. Uh, of power per transmit receive module and each one of the modules will have its own duplexer and in each active TR module there will be its own receiver and the switching back here which will these are a lot of these lines of control lines which says okay turn on the transmitter okay listen to the receiver so and the data will go back through those lines okay and here's this is the uh, switch to make sure there's isolation Okay, but back way back here, we have the waveform generator, and it will send signals out to the different subarrays with the information about what the phase shifters should be doing. And notice that the transmit receive function, the big bottom line here, is it's distributed to each module on the array. And likewise, the receive function, as, as the transmit and the receive, is distributed. The, Receive echoes will come back, and then they're already go gone through uh, the receiver, so they're back at baseband, be added together, and then they'll be digitized. Okay, here are some pictures of some large phased arrays, just to show you. I mentioned before Aegis is a passive array system with 4,000 elements at S band. This is the theater high altitude area defense radar, a missile defense radar. It's got 25,000 elements. And Cobra Dane is a passive array radar that, that is uh, built by Raytheon. It was built uh, over 20 years ago. And it has 15,000 active elements. Okay, So here are some examples. They're pretty big physically and with lots of elements. And LB, uh, Cobra Dane is at L band, Thad is at X band. Okay. Now there's another way you can push stuff up into the front end, and that is you can go digital on receive. Okay. And this is going to allow you to to form multiple beams. What we do is we generate our signal, transmit it as we would in a standard phased array radar. And what we could do is we could take from our TR module the signal coming back, combine it in the A to D here, and generate one digital beam with an analog array. And uh, Or what we could do is we could take the signal from each module, digitize it right up at the module, and then back instead of generating one beam we can have a multi-channel digital beam former a device which will generate not one beam but multiple beams so if we have a transmit beam that's fairly wide we can generate a number of different receive beams that are that could look at different places within that transmit beam and each active analog TR module is followed by an A to D for immediate digitization. 
So we can, if this, this is, so it allows us to make multiple beams and that different beams can perform different functions or simultaneously do surveillance over different pieces of coverage. Okay? And RISTER, uh, the system I showed you a little earlier, uh, that's a sol that solid state system uses uh, digital on receive technology. Okay? Now the last and the next thing that we can do is we can, uh, the last subject I'm going to dwell on, is that we can transmit and receive uh, digitally. That is, we can have our waveform control and then up in the transmit transmitter we can digitally gener have generate the transmit signal right up in the TR module so that we have digital on transmit and receive. Okay, so both waveform generation and receive digitization are performed within each TR module. And that gives us complete flexibility on transmit and receive. It allows us to do an enormous amount of sophisticated signal processing which may, uh, and adaptive uh, signal processing techniques that um, are just very, very useful. Now I'd just like to summarize. Uh, the radar transmit function, I noted, is accomplished in two stages. First, we generate the waveforms at low power, then upconvert to the RF, to the microwave frequencies, and then we amplify in the transmitter to generate the signal that we transmit. The receiver is where we uh, receive the signal, filter, amplify, and downconvert. And these final, these receive signals are then digitized to get ready for the signal processor and the detection lectures we've already gone through. And the, a, how we develop the transmitter and receiver architecture is very, very dependent on the antenna type that we use. We can have a centralized architecture like uh, dish radars and passive ra array systems um, or distributed architectures such as active arrays and digital array radars. Well now lastly to the last view graph in the whole course. These are the references for chapter 10. Well I'd like to thank all of you viewing the course, uh, the persistence that it takes to spend this amount of time and I hope that the course has been very useful to you and it will be useful to you in the future and that you've learned an awful lot about radar systems. Thank you.